Hey, what's up everyone? This is Dark Bolt Algo, and this is another quick video in our educational series on how to trade the stock market for beginners. We're here to teach you some basic and even some advanced professional concepts in technical analysis. So if you're just starting out trading stocks, options, or even futures, or even if you have previous experience, this series will teach you some additional skills, or maybe just give you a refresher on some that you can put to use in your journey to trade the stock market. So one thing that I wanted to go over would be um, and Fibonacci, both the extension and the retracement. This is going to require a little bit of additional setup, so I'm definitely going to try to keep this video short and sweet. So uh, before we get into it, I want to make sure that everyone smashes the like button, right? Hits the subscribe, subscribe button as well, and turn on notifications. That way you know every time we put out a new video. If you have a few minutes, you can jump in, watch it, leave a comment in the comment section below, let us know how we're doing. So, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. What we see in front of us is the, the Thinkorswim platform. And there's a couple ways to get to Fibonacci. The first is to click this little drawing tool area down here, which brings up a little panel of a bunch of different tools. I personally like, and this is a little little hack, a little thinkorswim hack, if you have a scrolling mouse and you click the center scroll wheel, it'll pop up the drawing tools panel for you as well. So um, now that the drawing tools panel is up, the percent sign is the Fibonacci retracement, right? That is the two point tool. So you'll draw a point from low, from high to low, and that's the Fibonacci retracement, right? Okay, retracement, two point tool. The tool right next to it, which is a percentage sign with a three point tool attached to it, is the Fibonacci extension. That is the tool where you'll draw a point from, and I use from low to high, back down to low. There's two different schools of thought. If I have time, I'll try to jump into both of them. So the first thing we want to do is select the Fibonacci retracement tool. And then what we'll need to do is we'll need to pull up our favorite stock chart. It can be whatever you'd like it to be. Currently I have Johnson & Johnson up. I think I'm going to go with maybe, let's just grab another one uh, while we're at it. Let's look at ooh, Tesla, how about Square? Yeah. Palantir? Everybody likes Palantir? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and click on Etsy. Trying to find one that's got several points that we can utilize. Um, right, we'll just go with ES, which is slash ES is the E mini SP futures contract. There are several points here for us to go over. It's just not super. And there's, yeah, we've got a couple. All right, so real quick, I apologize. I need to get rid of this um, open interest study. I don't know why it keeps saving it on my chart. Let me just go ahead and save my chart so that it's not on for the next video. All right, there we go. Click OK. I'm going to go ahead and remove my drawing set. So any previous drawings I had on are now officially removed. I'm going to zoom into an area that's got a couple of different points of low to high and high to low. Looking at, so now we've got, we've got some high to low points, we've got some low to high points, and I can show you what the Fibonacci extension, or excuse me, retracement will do. So clicking on the center mouse pull button, I click the Fibonacci retracement, and I find a previous high, and I want to go from previous high to previous low, typically from left to right. So I click on high to low, right? Did you see how that snapped there? Here's another little quick hack. If you click on your your little gear icon and click on general, and you do want to make sure that your snap drawings too, make sure that's set to OHLC. What that does, it allows you to not have to be 100% precise on where you place your cursor to get the beginning of the drawing tool to snap to the candle either wick or a body I personally use the wicks so that's just a little hack that helps you get get a little bit better placement so what we've done there is I went from low to high and as you can see I've got a couple of different 
uh, multicolored lines here. Now when you go to do yours the first time, what's going to happen is you're going to have, let me just, maybe that'll quit, maybe that'll make the shaking stop. Nope, how about there? Nope, there? All right, I think I've, nope. So for some reason we've got shaking happening. I bet you there's some action going on with the futures right now. All right, so let me just try this again. Reset. All right. Let's see if I can get this zoomed in to where it's not going to shake a whole bunch. All right. Let's try it here. All right, it's not shaking. Sorry, I just I can't stand the shakiness of it. All right, so what I did was uh, I went from from previous high to previous low. Uh, my setup has only got a couple of different lines showing up. When you first do yours, you're going to have a whole bunch of lines showing up, potentially as many as this, right? A whole bunch of the same color lines. I personally do not use all of the Fibonacci extensions available. I use the the point the point five percent the point six one eight. I use the one or one hundred percent. Then I also use the one two seven two one four one four one six one eight and two six one eight. If you don't have those, you can simply click in there and add those numbers in. I also like to to separate mine by color coding, right? I hit cancel on that. Let me bring that up one more time for you. I'll hit Edit Properties. So I de I deselect the two three six, the three eight two, and I'll just go ahead and and the seven eight six. Those are all gone. So my fifty percent retracements are always blue and a one width. My six one eight retracements are always bright red and at least a three width, so that they're easily seen. The one I have set as this light gray color. They're 100% as a light gray color, and I've got that dotted. I don't necessarily use that as a target level, but it's always nice to know where, where the high was that you've drawn your Fibonacci line from. Uh, the, one two, the 1272 is always green. The 1414, again, is that light gray with a dash. It's not really well known, the 1414, but it's pretty significant. You'll see a lot of times price action will get up to that level and and hang out there, right? It is a good target point. The 1618 is uh, the red and it is solid with three width and the 216 is kind of grayed. A lot of times we won't even get to the 216 level. Okay, so once that's done, the next thing you can do is this this color down here. I believe yours will be red when you first open it. I don't like the 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 line that signifies the low to high to be visible i think it's distracting so i can make that black dashed and a one width so the other things that you can do um i always try to make sure that my fibonacci's extend to the right and i like to have the coefficients on the right so that would be the price as well as the percentage you can set it up however you want if you only want it to go for as wide as you draw it, you can. I personally like mine to go all the way out to the side. So once I do that, I hit OK. And that gives us our nice two levels of retracement. And it also gives us three levels of extension for targets. So looking at this low to high that I drew, price came down and blew through the 618, the 50%. The so this from here to here is not, is not the Fibonacci retracement I'm looking for. I'm looking for the retracement from from the low on moving backward back up towards the high. So price coming up from the low ran into the 50% retracement. It looks as if though it had a little bit of a struggle there because it closed right at that 50%. The next day it popped above the 618 and came back down and closed above the 50% whereas the day before it didn't. And the third day, this, we had the same nice momentum move to the upside. It broke through the 618, came down and closed above the 618, right? So that would be the, the retrace, excuse me, the extension, 
excuse me, retracement has been completed. Now we're looking for the move to continue upward for some targets. At this point, I would have gone ahead and got out the Fibonacci retracement tool, which you'll see it should line up with the extension. So I use the Fibonacci retracement as a dual purpose tool. I use it to track retracements and then I use it to track or to provide targets for the extension. Okay. Using the Fibonacci extension tool, separate tool, it's a three point tool, it requires three points of contact. Again, touching the center line here, we would go ahead and click the extension tool, or excuse me, the retracement, the, yes, the extension tool. I always get them confused. It's a tongue tie, but it's a way that, so I think or some has them labeled it, just really messes me up. So to use this tool, you wanna to go from the low to the high there's a school of thought that you would go back to a retraced level. I actually go back down to the low. What that does, let me just turn off, let me remove the retracement and watch the extension levels. So that's why I, I kind of like using the, the retracement as an extension and a retracement tool. So you, looking at Fibonacci, the <coughs> extension from the low to the high before it broke, right? Before it retraced, before we had a day closing bef below the high. That puts our support level. Um, so we've got two upward targets based on this current run. We've also got a support level based on this current run. So if you want to also make sure you click edit properties on your, your extension, when your extension loads up, it's the same deal as before. It's going to be all of these <clears throat> coefficients are going to be checked and they're all going to be visible. I'm going to leave this up here for a second so you can see how I have mine. I've got the 50%. This would be the retracement of the extension, the 618 retracement of the extension, and then your targets would be the 1, 1, 2, 7, 4, right, uh, all the way up. Same deal. I have those, have those color coded and labeled as far as width is concerned. All right, the next thing that you also want to make sure is if you don't want to see these lines, you want to check the gray, make them make them dash and have it a one width. So, with the extension tool, what we've got is we've got a we've got a nice we've got a nice upward direction, right? We're in a good trend. We were in an uptrend, we ran into some resistance, which would be the previous high, and then at that point we pulled back. That gave us a that gave us a two points, a low to a high, and then the third point would be back down to the low. The Fibonacci extension tool gives me a target level, right? The 127 is a target, the 141 is a target, and the 161 are my price targets, right? That's how I get my price targets. I also are, I'm also able to provide myself two levels of support for any sort of pullback or any sort of retracement from the existing trend. So price went ahead and pulled back, found some support, and it continued upwards. It broke above the 100% or the previous high. If I was in this position, I would go ahead and stay in this position because I haven't reached my target, the 127 or the 168 target yet. I also haven't broken the support that I've outlined for myself, which would be the 618 or the 50% retracement of the extension. It's important to remember, retracement of extension. We did come down and almost touch the 50% retracement, but we never closed below the 618 or below the 50, and we did not close below the 34. So the, this longer term swing trade, obviously, um, so this trade is still valid in my eyes because we didn't close below any of those significant levels. People would argue that the trend is broke when the 8 is broke and you're closed at least 50% below the 8 or if you close at least 50% below the 21. Now, depending on what you're trading and how you're trading, yes, that's true. Looking at this chart again, if there's another school of thought, let me remove this Fibonacci extension. So the other school of thought is a three-point touch. You would go from low to high and then you would go to the retracement of the broken trend. 
So if the stock was still running and running and running, we wouldn't have a high point to put our second point on. We did have a retrace. We did pull back that one day, and that would put us at the to the, the three point rule. So low to high to retracement level. That gives us some targets to go after. However, it doesn't give us necessary give us any um, support levels. So that's it. Um, I'm sure you can have lots of questions. Make sure you leave those in the comment section below. If I need to do a, a follow-up video or if I need to break this up into two different videos, one specifically for retracements or one specifically for extensions, I can. All right, a little bit longer video than I, that I anticipated. Uh, my name is Darkpool Algo. Thanks for joining me. Make sure you smash the like button. Go over and click on subscribe. Turn on notifications. It really does help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And we know how much we love algos. You can reach us anytime at darkpoolcharts.com. We have a comment section, or we have a contact us form. You can reach out that way, or you can hit me up on Twitter or leave a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for joining me, and have a great day.